First of all, I would like to thank the chair for the excellent introduction. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sunbom Choi. Today, I'll be presenting our research, Serving Heterogeneous Machine Learning Models on Multi-GPU Servers with Spatial Temporal Sharing. This research was conducted with my colleagues at KAIST. Nowadays, GPUs are widely adopted as machine learning inference accelerators. This is because GPUs accelerate highly parallel operations and are generally, generally accessible computing devices. When accelerating machine learning inference tests on GPU, there are crucial requirements. First, is that inference queries must be served in a bounded time, often given as a service level objective. Second, to improve the utilization of servers, multiple heterogeneous models must be served together at the same time. There have been a few approaches for scheduling machine learning inference tests on GPU. The first approach is batching. Batching means merging inputs to a single large input. It is primarily used in systems where you can afford to wait and form a batch with inputs waiting in a queue. Batching is used because larger inputs improve throughput and better utilize the computation resources of GPU. In order to guarantee the SLO, the time of waiting to form a batch added to executing the batch must be within the SLO. This implies that batch size cannot be infinitely huge because waiting and execution time increases with larger batch sizes. Another prior approach used for scheduling inference is time sharing. Time sharing is used to serve multiple models by interleaving execution of batches for each model. The approach increases utilization by decreasing the idle time of GPU by executing batches more frequently. Based on the approach published in 2019, Waiting and, execution batch and executing batches are done in consecutive rounds. For example, when time sharing two models A and B, the first round is used to wait and form batches of both models. The second round, the batches that were produced in the first round will be executed in an interleaving manner. Since forming and executing batches of both models must guarantee SLO, two rounds must be within SLO. Unfortunately, there is a problem that remains unsolved by prior approaches. And the problem is that batching and time-sharing inference tests still underutilize GPUs. In order to analyze how resources are underutilized, we've measured the latency of GoogleNet and ResNet50 with different amount of competing resource and various batch sizes. The latency was measured with batch size starting from 1 to 32. For the computing resources, the percentage of stream multiprocessors available to the model was adjusted starting from 20% to 100%. By looking at the latencies of the largest batch size, which is 32, we can see a diminishing return beyond 40%. The latency decreases significantly when increasing resources from 20% to 40%. For GoogleNet, comparing to the latency when given 100% resource, the latency multiple decreases from 1.7 to 1.3. And this means the amount of latency decreased from an additional 20% is bigger than the additional 60% beyond the 40% knee point. The same also goes for ResNet 50 as it decreases from 2.2 to 1.4. For smaller batch sizes, the knee point for diminishing return is either the same or smaller. In conclusion, we can seize the opportunity and improve performance with better resource utilization. We would like to introduce a new opportunity, spatial temporal scheduling. Spatial temporal scheduling performs batching and time sharing, but additionally spatial sharing. Prior approaches, such as batching and time sharing, execute only one batch at a time. Hence, resources are underutilized over time. However, spatial temporal scheduling additionally considers spatial sharing and execute multiple batches at the same time. The advantage of spatial temporal scheduling compared to prior approach is that it can improve the utilization of resources per time. This is advantageous to performance, since improved utilization means better throughput. Unfortunately, no previous work has defined an abstract unit of spatial and temporal resources. Therefore, we've come up with a new term, GPU-let, to define a share of spatial temporal GPU resource. GPU-lets spatially share GPU by reserved computational resources of the GPU. And each GPU-let has an associated partition size. 
Partition size represents the amount of reserved computational resource each GPU-let has received. GPU-lets are also temporarily shared. The duration of GPU-let is decided by extended Sukoshi bin packing algorithm introduced in SOCP 2019. Up to now, I've introduced the problem that research has tackled. From now on, I would like to focus on the solution itself. I will now introduce the overview of our proposed GPU-let scheduling framework. First, we have a front-end server that controls multiple back-end servers. The back-end servers are each responsible for a physical server with multiple GPUs that are each allocated with GPU-lets. The front-end server maintains a request queue for each model. For, scheduling, for each scheduling period, the incoming rate is monitored and sent to the GPU-let scheduler. The scheduler will do spatial temporal scheduling with profile information, such as latency per batch size and SLO. Next, the results of spatial temporal scheduling will be sent to each corresponding backend server. And finally, the backend server will execute the results sent by the frontend server. Today, I'll focus on how GPU scheduler is designed since it is closely related to our main idea. Let me introduce what the GPU scheduler was designed to achieve. First is cost-effective scheduling. The amount of resource is carefully chosen to yield maximum performance with minimum resource usage. Second is providing scalable dynamic reorganization. The scheduler is designed to minimize the overhead of reorganizing resources due to a scheduling event. The final is to predict potential interference when more than two models execute on shared resources. Due to limited time, we'll skip how we predict the interference for this presentation. Please refer to the paper for more details on this part. Now, I'll explain how the GPU scheduler was designed to be cost effective. The major challenge of scheduling GPU lets is a large source space. For example, if there are p ways of partitioning n GPUs, the total case will be p to the power n cases. And this is not scalable when either p or n increases. Let me elaborate my point with a graphical example. Let's say we're going to schedule three models, and we know each model's request rate. We need to compare all possible cases of spatial partitioning GPUs. For each case, we allocate a partition to each GPU-let that will serve each model. Afterwards, we check p to the power n cases whether the rates are satisfied or not. Hence, exhaustive searching is costly and not scalable. Our main idea to this problem is to partition GPUs by the minimum required partitions incrementally instead of exhaustively trying every possible case. Let me explain this concept with a graphical example. The first step we do is find the cost-effective partition size of each GPU-let, which will serve each model. Next, we partition each GPU incrementally by locating GPU-lets starting from the first model. If there is an empty GPU, the GPU is partitioned into the exact size that required by the GPU-let. However, when there are no empty GPUs, but still have partitions to locate, we find the best fit for the remaining GPUs in order to minimize wasted resources. By incrementally splitting the GPUs with minimum partitions, we can avoid exhaustively searching all possible cases and yet yield similar scheduling results to that of exhaustive scheduling. However, there remains one important question. How do we find the number and size of cost-effective partitions? Let me answer the question by first introducing how to find a cost-effective partition. Finding the most cost-effective partition means getting the partition size that shows maximum performance per resource. The size of cost-effective partition can be found with profile information by locating the starting point of diminishing return. The reason why such a diminishing return exists is that the latency of machine learning inference is not linearly proportional to the amount of resources. According to the experimental results mentioned previously in this presentation, GoogleNet, for example, does not show linear performance. When scheduling, we use a more intuitive metric, throughput. In order to schedule with throughput, we profile the maximum throughput which can be achieved for each percentage of resource. When profiling each partition size, the first step is to get the maximum batch size where the latency does not exceed the SLO. The next step is calculating the throughput by dividing the number of batches by the latency required to execute the batch. After going through all the steps, estimating throughput for each partition size is complete. 
As we compare the throughput between resource percentage, we can see a diminishing return. The performance increase between 40% and 60% is not as great as the increase between 20% and 40%. Hence, 40% becomes the cost effective partition size. Next, let me explain how partitions are located to input rates. Multiple partitions are required when a single partition cannot provide enough throughput for a given request rate. When allocating partitions to a model, the scheduler follows two rules to ensure minimum sum of partitions. Number one is choosing as many cost-effective partitions as possible. And number two is choosing the minimum partition if there are any rates remaining. For example, let's say a model's request rate has an incoming rate of 900 requests per second. And we have the profiling info for throughput per partition size. Also, let's assume the most cost-effective partition size is 40% for this model. According to the profile, 40% can achieve 400 RPS, and 20% can support up to 100 RPS. Following the first rule, we pick as many cost-effective partitions as possible so that the sum of throughput does not exceed the given rate. However, the sum of throughput is still 100 RPS shy. So, the scheduler follows rule number two and consults the table to find the minimum partition size that is big enough for the remaining rate. 20% is added, and a total of 900 RPS becomes achievable. Next, I'll introduce how we've minimized the overhead of dynamically reorganizing resources when a scheduling event occurs. Let me explain the scheduling events of reorganization. The GPS scheduler monitors each model's request rate periodically. When models show a sudden change of request rates, the GPU-LED scheduler will detect this change and decide whether a new size of GPU-LED is necessary. If so, the size of GPU-LEDs running on the GPU will be reorganized to the new sizes. However, there is a major challenge in dynamically reorganizing partitions. The challenge is that preparing a new partition has a large overhead. The overhead includes loading kernels used by the underlying machine learning framework and warming up models served by the new GPU-LED. So, our scheduling framework hides the overhead by preparing GPU-LEDs in the background, in other words, shadowing. There are two types of context when reorganizing. One is the active context serving requests, and the other is the shadow context, which is responsible for preparing GPU-LEDs in the background. Let's say two GPU-LEDs, A and B, were being used to serve in an active context. Due to an event, when the scheduler concludes that A and B needs to be reorganized into A' prime and B', prime, the scheduler creates a shadow context preparing A' prime and B'. Prime. After the preparations are ready, the active context is removed, and the shadow context becomes a new active context as it starts serving requests. Finally, let me introduce the evaluation results. We have used two multimodal applications and five custom multimodal scenarios for benchmarks. The two multimodal applications are game and traffic. Game is an application for image and digit recognition of a screen, and traffic is used for camera footage analysis. Game is composed of seven models, and traffic consists of three models, as depicted in the figure on the right. For multimodal scenarios, we have tried to diversify the composition of models according to memory footprint size. Further details of each benchmark and SLO are available in the paper. We have deployed our scheduling framework on multi-GPU servers, each with two GPUs. The servers were connected to 10G Ethernet network, and the main metric we use to evaluate our framework is SLO preserved throughput, which is the maximum throughput when SLO violation rate is below 1%. SLO violation rate is the percentage of violated requests over total requests. We have used four schedules for evaluation. The first is timeshare, which supports only timesharing among tasks, and the next one is space share which does not timeshare but provides spatial sharing by only allocating best fit partitions in a greedy way. The third is GPU-LED, which does both time and spatial sharing, but does not consider interference. The last is GPU-LED plus int, which considers all aspects for scheduling. First, let me introduce how our scheduler successfully increased SLO preserved throughput. The graph shows the maximum throughput each scheduler can achieve without violating SLO for each benchmark. For every benchmark, the scheduler with both time and spatial sharing outperformed the schedule relying on either one only. Comparing GPU-LED plus int to timeshare, 
The throughput increased by 61.7% on average. Additionally, considering interference, increased throughput by 7.5%. This is because considering interference yields more accurate results when scheduling. Next, we've experimented how well our scheduler can scale the number of GPUs for fluctuating workloads. We've extended our environment to eight GPUs for this experiment. Three models were used, each having a unique pattern of rates for 3,200 seconds. The graph on the top reports the throughput over the 3,200 second experiment, and the middle reports the number of GPUs, and the last one presents the SLO violation. As you can see, our scheduler has successfully adjusted the number of GPUs and maintained SLO violation rate under 1%. There are more experimental results that are not included in the presentation. Please refer to our paper for more results. In conclusion, we've enhanced the performance of machine learning inference for GPUs with spatial temporal scheduling. The spatial temporal scheduler was further enhanced by minimizing wasted resource, scaling resource efficiently, and predicting interference effects. Experimental results show that our scheduler outperforms the temporal sharing scheduler's throughput by 61.7%. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for listening to my speech.